like a lot of Negro kids, I never would have made it without my mama. Not my daddy. See, when there wasn't no fat back to go with the beans, no socks to go with the shoes, no daddy to pay the bills, and no hope to go with tomorrow. My mama, she would smile and say, baby, we ain't poor. We're just broke. Poor is a state of mind you'll never grow out of. But being broke is a temporary condition. My beautiful mama, she smiled at me like Miss America. And my brothers and sisters, they would dance around our little kitchen with our round, our round wooden table. And orange crates we used as chairs. Cause that's how poor we was. I remember that Christmas. Oh, that Christmas, my mama was so happy. All the food folks brought us. That man, Mr. Ben, <laughs> giving us more credit. And my mama even told the electric man it's a turning the lights on again. <sighs> but I was scared. At the time, I was wishing I could die with the feeling I had because I knew. My mama was going to make me mad. And I was going to make my mama mad. Me and my father, Big Presley, we was going to fight. Dick Gregory once told an audience, you see, this one time I went down south to this restaurant, and this white waitress came up to me and said, uh, sir, we don't serve colored people. And I said, well, miss, I don't necessarily eat colored people, but I would like a box of fried chicken. <laughs> the autobiography of Dick Gregory is a beautiful, powerful, and ugly story of a man who wanted to live in a world without hate and malice. And he does something about it by becoming a civil rights activist, a social icon, a cultural critic, a writer, and a comedian. Nigger, the autobiography of Dick Gregory. Hey, mama. You waiting on him, ain't you? Now, come on, mama, I know you are. Because every Christmas Eve, you take a bath and you put on that perfume, mama. You get in front of this window, waiting for daddy. Well, tonight, mama, I want to sit up with you. See, there were so many things I wanted to tell my mama that night while we waited for my daddy. While we prayed and hugged each other against the cold, I just wanted to say, hey, mama, remember that day I told you I went to Dr. Jackson's house? And whenever it's too cold to study in the house, I could go to his, mama. Well, mama. Mama, that. Mama, that was a lot. I played all that day in a vacant lot. I made up a teacher who loved me and taught me how to read. A teacher who wanted to put me in the idiot seat whenever I came to school with my homework all wrinkled and damp. I never got to tell her about the time when it was too cold to study in the kitchen. So I did my homework under the covers with a flashlight on. And then I fell asleep. And one of the five other kids must have peed on it. Hey, mama. Remember on my birthday? When I came home with a shopping bag full of presents? And I told you all the kids from my class loved me so much, mama, that they got me these things. Mama. Mama, that wasn't true. I 
stole all those things from the 10 cent store. And wrapped them up. And put a different kid's name on each one. It was so many things I, I wanted to tell my mama that night. I we waited for my father, but I, I never did. I think she knew already. And that same night, my father, he came home. And I remember those nights. Mama would leave the hallway lights on. She would listen to the police news on a radio station, hoping to not hear his name. Suddenly, a taxi cab pulls up from my side, and I hear a deep voice saying, Keep the change, friend! And everybody was screaming and hollering. I just hear my mama saying, Do not touch his clothes with your dirty hands. Do not touch your father's clothes. Then I ran into my room, and I slammed my door. Father's here. Now come on out. She was scared to leave him to see if I was okay. Whenever she left him, she was scared he was gonna walk away. Presley, don't worry about that boy. He's crazy. That got me mad. My mama forgetting all her love for me to go pacify him. I remember she, she, she brought him out the whiskey. And that same night, he beat her. He beat her all through the house, swinging his belt through every room, whooping her and kicking her and telling her all about this woman, saying, oh, 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 you, 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 you think you're so goddamn good? down the street with you. Every time I walk down the street, everybody wants to say hello to you. They look at me like I was stuck, like I was... Girl, do you understand? I got bitches, women, proud to walk down the street with big press. You taught Bridget. Hell, whatever you taught him, you ain't turn him all against stay dead. Ugh. I watched him knock my mama down and say things to her. Her things I wanted to say whenever she forgot her love for me. And he came up to me. He won me against my face so hard into the wall. <laughs> the pictures fell off their hooks. One was a picture of Jesus and the other was a piece of wood with the Ten Commandments on it. I grabbed the butcher knife off the wall. And I was gonna swing it at his head. And right as I was gonna swing it at his head, my mama, she grabbed my wrist with both her hands and she twisted the knife out of my hand. Began to walk out the door. They go, my mama trying to hold the door open. I hear my brothers and sisters crying, Daddy, don't leave. And he left us. He, he left us to face cold winters and hot summers and picnics with nothing in the basket. Picnics with nothing in the basket. You see, Big Press had to be a lonely man. There must have been times he woke up in a lonely bed. Times he wanted to give up every 7 11 he had. Because I would give up all those times I never had. To have my father at home. 